So welcome to part 18 of the lecture on uh, stoichiometric organometallics. Subject of today is organoborone chemistry for enantioselective synthesis. Well, somehow we need, always need uh, current information in there and uh, it's uh, always a good idea to uh, make use of a chiral pool. That means uh, to make use of uh, chiral natural products. And one natural product, which is chiral, we already saw in the preceding lesson, pinene, alpha pinene, and uh, in this case here is drawn the plus alpha pinene. First, this pinene in this example is treated with 9 BBN, which we talked about also yesterday. And secondly, a ketone is offered with a small substituent R and a large substituent. I try to draw that situation which arises then. with this perspective. Well, okay, so hydroboration with 9 BBN of that double bond, the barone will end up at this position. And it's a Zinn addition process. The hydroborane will avoid the sterically hindered phase, which is uh, the one with the dimethyl methylene group. So, uh, the barone will sit at this position opposite to the dimethyl methylene group. So we abbreviate the 9 BBN moiety with this one here. And uh, so in addition, means the hydrogen is on the same side as the barone. Here we have the methyl group and there is this hydrogen, well, which initially is that one here. <coughs> so, and the carbonyl group of the ketone coordinates to the Lewis acidic barone. We have a small and the large substituent. The carbonyl group is reduced, that means a hydride has to be transferred. Well, okay, the barone coordinated at the oxygen, we increase the delta plus at the carbon, and as soon as the electrophilic carbon comes close to that hydrogen, it is transferred well, via a six-membered transition state.
So a six-member transition state, this time not uh, a chair, but uh, obviously uh, a boat type confirmation. And I think um, with this um, drawing, it becomes clear why the large substituents RL occupies this position, well, some kind of exo-type position, whereas the small substituent is in the proximity of that muscle group. The large substituent avoids this situation. So this is the transition state. And it then results in the regeneration of the plus alpha pinene and The brown alcoholate is formed enantio selectively. Maybe it's a good idea to think about, did you ever see a similar situation where, well, a Lewis acidic metal center coordinates to an uh, oxygen, and then we have a CH bond, and from that CH bond, uh, a hydride is transferred. We know at least one example, which is indeed similar, this is the transition state with a Kanitsaur reaction. Okay, so um, <coughs> you know Kanitsaur reaction. The uh, well, the most famous example is the one with the benzaldehyde. Use benzaldehyde and um, uh, potassium hydroxide, and it is a rather slow reaction. It might take a couple of days. A and uh, it only works because we don't have any alpha acidic ketones or aldehydes present. As soon as you have alpha to the, well, it's a reaction with an aldehyde, alpha to the aldehyde, then the deprotonation alpha to the aldehyde functionality is much faster than the nucleophilic attack of the hydroxide. So, we have the aldehyde plus KOH addition process with the second equivalent of the aldehyde present, then the carbonyl group coordinates to the potassium, and, well, we have the delta plus there, and, uh, well, the transition state That's the way the electrons are moving. <laughs> so 
It's a disproportionation reaction since uh, one aldehyde is oxidized to the oxidation state of the carboxylic acid, the other one is reduced to the oxidation state of the aldehyde. This transition state might not be that precise. It is discussed that for the migration of the hydride, we should deprotonate the second alcohol first. Okay, it looks a bit odd to have um, the second functionality also deprotonated while we have essentially a, an alcoholate already there. But it is in equilibrium and it might be just a short time. Or an OH minus is coordinated by hydroxide, uh, by uh, hy hydrogen bridging bonds here. Nevertheless, removing a proton increases the electron pressure on that CH bond and uh, makes it easier. I did my weights, okay? But it is clear that uh, uh, we have a similarity to that situation in the organoborone chemistry. Well, what I should mention that uh, there is, and you kn should know that, also a crossed Canizzaro reaction if you choose, for instance, Benz aldehyde and form aldehyde, then the form aldehyde is always the reducing agent, and the form aldehyde is uh, um, therefore oxidized to uh, formic acid. Then, okay. Well, back to this type of reaction. What are the results for enantioselectivity which are achieved? An alkynone with, uh, well, this uh, pinene 9 BBN combination Actually, this is called the alpine orane. So, the chiral, in this case, proper gulic alcohol is obtained with 92% enantiomeric excess. And another example this one with 98% enantiomeric excess. And an additional example, having that chloride functionality here, but uh, a different chiral boron yeah, hydro transfer, hydride transfer reagent is used. But also deriving from the alpha pinene.
boron chloride and this moiety is uh, while well, sitting twice at the barone. The result is 97% E. Thinking about reducing ketones and uh, aldehydes. Um, well, we think about, of course, uh, sodium borohydride. But the more, more reactive one is, as you know, lithium aluminium hydride. And just for comparison, we could also apply lithium aluminum hydride and a chiral auxiliary. Very easy to set up. Well, lithium aluminum hydride plus binol. Hope you know that. It's the binaphtol. Reacts with each other and uh, two equivalents of the molecular hydrogen will evolve. Binol and a trope chiral system with a chiral axis. Hydrogen is developed. Then we have the aluminate with still two active hydrides. So, and uh, this aromatic ketone as the substrate is reduced to the chiral benzylic alcohol, 92% yield and better than 99% EE as the result. As it turned out, um, chiral information can be offered catalytically for reduction with boron hydrides. The most famous example is the so-called CBS catalyst. CBS abbreviates the authors of the initial publication. It was from the Corey group and the co-workers were Bakshi and Shibata. So, CBS. It's a CBS catalyst which catalyzes the so-called CBS reduction. First, what is the CBS catalyst? This is, this is its structure. Well, most of you should uh, notice from which natural product one should start to synthesize that. Of course, the amino acid 
proline. So, while in a book about stoichiometric organometallics, uh, I found that uh, this uh, amino acid uh, is directly treated uh, with uh, phenyl magnesium halide in large excess, while, as you know, that uh, the first equivalent uh, would uh, react uh, with the acid and form the um, <coughs> magnesium salt of the acid, and uh, this is not very good uh, reactive uh, with uh, Grignard reagents. Yeah. Well, in the book it is uh, claimed, however, in uh, the initial study, it is preferred to uh, derivatize with phosgene and uh, well, triethylamine So, and now it's clear there is no problem with a reaction with an um, aryl grignard. We have two carbonyl groups. This one is, of course, the most, the ester carbonyl group, is uh, the, the re more reactive one compared to this one, the carbon carbonate, carbonate carbonyl group. This is less reactive because uh, well, we have a more stable situation here with uh, the conjugation of a free electron pair of that nitrogen. So, with an excess of phenyl Grignard, it will react, and after hydrolysis, We will get this tertiary alcohol and uh, those two step process delivers that with a 73% yield while well, on a scale um, more than 200 grams. Second reagent. Now to introduce that uh, aura cycle. Methyl boronic acid easily forms an anhydride a cyclic trimeric anhydride. which is the reagent of choice for forming that uh, well, CBS catalyst. Well, and that last step uh, proceeds quantitatively, or almost quantitatively. One example for a reduction with a CBS catalyst. In connection to the synthesis of an inflammatory drug. Well, you need uh, approximately 10% CBS catalyst and a BH3 source, maybe THF BH3. Okay. 
you should avoid excess of a BH3 because the BH3 itself can also react with that carbonyl group. So dropping, just adding dropwise that uh, solution of the BH3 complex. And carefully performing the reaction, then one can achieve a 100% yield and 79.6% uh, EE in this case. So, how can we explain what is going on there? So we have our borer cycle here obviously an endo phase with uh, the barone and the phenyl groups diphenyl methylene group on the same side of the ring The BH3 coordinates to that nitrogen, to the free electron pair of that nitrogen. Whereas the ketone If it's free, with one free electron pair coordinates to the other baron. In this situation, the large substituent of a ketone should occupy a position exo of that concave face and the small one than endo. Well, it's activated and the hydride is transferred. It works very well, small molecule and achieving by this catalyst very high enantio selectivity. All it was called by Cory a chemzyme. Of course, this is uh, some kind of matic marketing, but uh, well. There is some reason for, for that. It's, it's really a good method. And uh, one um, very interesting example I should add which proves that not only sterical factors are important, but also electronic factors in combination with sterical factors might be at work. And here we have the example. This ketone is reduced with chorus chemzyme. to the corresponding alcohol, secondary alcohol, with an 81% enantiomeric excess. Well, the excess enantiomeric excess is lower than in the, example we've, in the examples we have uh, seen 
before. However, it is remarkable because it's clear there is not a steric effect which differentiates between this error group and that error group. It has to be an electronic influence. The reason is that the electron, the free electron pair at the oxygen trans to the anisyl group is more basic than the other one, which is explained by an interaction well, of the sigma, the empty sigma star orbital of that CC bond. Here is the empty sigma star, star orbital and an interaction with that free electron pairs. And the fact is, which one? This one is uh, more basic and will therefore preferentially coordinate to the baron. Next subject. Enantio selective, after that, uh, enantio selective reduction. Now, enantio selective allulation of uh, uh, carbonyl compounds, aldehydes, and, uh, uh, well, uh, also ketones. <coughs> well, we should remember the diastereo selective. aldol addition, since we will notice some similarities. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. So, aldehyde plus an enolate after hydrolysis, after reaction, and then hydrolysis gives the aldol addition product. And with that Z enolate, we get the Zun product diastereo selectively, we have those uh, two stereogenic center and uh, well the stereo selectivity we have explained uh, by the interactions in the six membered aromatic transition state that has to be discussed as uh, the mechanistic rationale. So as the metal we generally had uh, lithium magnesium, and also barone. Remember that was especially the case with the Evans enolate chemistry, where R was a chiral auxiliary, and uh, with, that chi with the chiral auxiliary, then we are able to um, perform the synthesis enantio selectively. Okay? Now let's compare it to the situation when we have an allyl metal reagent, just exchanging that oxygen of the enolate by a CH2 group, a methylene group. Then, of course, we should also get a product with two 
stereogenic centers, we should observe a diastereoselectivity, well, again, based on six-membered transition states. And imagine performing with this type of product an ozonolysis. Then we will end up with the same product. Now, we have uh, discussed this situation, briefly discussed, with uh, uh, well, Grignard reagents, allyl magnesium. Allyl boron is much more interesting, since in that case we could have the chiral auxiliary bound to the metal center. First example, again starting from alpha pinene. Having that color substituent twice at uh, the barone, now we Allylic allyl barone. First, the aldehyde. Secondly, hydrolysis will deliver this chiral homoallylic alcohol with ninety percent enantiomeric excess and better than 99% diastereoselectivity. Should have a closer look to allyl boranes and the binding situation. There is generally an equilibrium between the structure of the barone uh, at terminal position and the one with the barone in an internal position here. Generally, the equilibrium is on that side. Well, that means if we have structure like that and would like to apply that in the synthesis, we have a problem caused by the rearrangement. And the rearrangement proceeds via this transition state And in this transition state or pi allyl complex, um, the free p orbital of the barone is important. So you can imagine, therefore, if We change to a boronate, something like that, a boronic acid ester, in this case with a pinacone. Then we already have the interaction of the free electron pairs of the oxygen with the 
conjugated to the free um, p orbital of a baron. And therefore, those boronates are less prone for that type of rearrangement reaction. They are far less reactive and therefore these structures are far more stable compared uh, to um, <coughs> well, such an allyl barone complex with uh, uh, simple alkyl substitutes. That's the reason why um, for the syntheses we will um <coughs> study now um, the boronates are preferred. Especially active in that area was Professor Hoffmann at Marburg University. Nice initial study had this result. In this study, we don't have uh, chiral information present. Now it's uh, about diastereoselectivity. The Z olefin reacts with an aldehyde. and gives that homoallylic alcohol, either this or the other diastereoisomer. And the ratio was found to be 96 to 4, highly selective for this one. When starting with the E stereoisomer of the allyl borate, We have the opposite selectivity, 7 to 93. The selectivity is explained by, as I already told you, six-membered transition state. And now as an exercise, please try well, just starting with the E allylic boronate plus the aldehyde, please draw the transition state or the adduct leading to the transition state and uh, figure out does indeed explain your model than the predominant outcome of a reaction. So the aldehyde coordinates to the barone and uh, oh, let's wipe out this one because it's not the transition state. The trans olefin the berate 
functionality. Then the oxygen coordinates to the brain. Let's have this one in front. And it's important that we put the hydrogen of the aldehyde into an axial position during the transition state. We have a transition state that means, uh, well, the uh, boron carbon bond breaks. This is broken, then a double bond is formed. Here we get a single bond, CC connection from here to there. Carbonyl double bond becomes a CO single bond, and we have an oxygen barone bond. That's it. So, Yeah, should be right. Now, hydrolysis. Let's make it stepwise, but we don't make a mistake. <coughs> hydrolysis means um, We get this alcohol, and now we should translate that into a drawing similar to those. This R. Now, looking from having a look from this position, then we have. The hydroxyl group behind the blackboard, the hydrogen in front. And here we have the methyl group in front, the hydrogen behind the blackboard, and there the terminal olefin. So, let's compare this structure to the outcome of this reaction. So, and we will notice this drawing is the mirror image of that one. Well, that's just fine, because we have the diastereoselectivity, but since we didn't put in uh, chiral information, yeah, the outcome is, of course, racemic. And the mechanistic consideration, um, let, letting us get to 
uh, the other enantiomer to the mirror image of that one, well, simply tells us it's correct. Starting from this, we should get predominantly this one or the other enantiomer, and indeed, 93% of this diastereoisomer is obtained. So our mechanistic consideration is in accord with this scheme. So next step should, of course, be uh, having chiral information here at uh, the pinnacle unit. Again from Hoffman's group. Was reported this nice example. CY is a simply cyclohexyl with Benz aldehyde. This compound was obtained with uh, a nice diastereoselectivity, as reported before, but an extraordinary enantioselectivity of 99.5% EE. Imagine a process where you make use of this type of reaction several times. Aldehyde gives such an homoallylic alcohol or one which is protected, for instance, as a silyl ether, then ozonolysis will give us, again, the aldehyde, an aldehyde, once again, the same reaction with the same reagent, but now with an aldehyde which is already chiral with two, two stereogenic center. As it turned out, these stereogenic center have almost no influence on the diastereoselectivity of the next step. The chiral information here and uh, the um <coughs> stereo information of the olefin Z or E olefin determines the outcome of that step. Well, and after hydrolysis, maybe hydrolysis here, yeah, OH, CH3, OH, CH3. you will get to this situation four stereogenic centers side by side.
Evans enolate chemistry is uh, one alternative. So the Hoffman group applied this for the synthesis of a uh, natural product, a retinolite. I should draw that structure. Rather complicated with lots of stereogenic centers and in one article from, I think, from the 60s or early 70s, there's written that it might be impossible ever to synthesize such a molecule artificially and about 10 or 15 years later the Hoffman group was successful. That's it. And this partial structure should remind you of that. Okay, and this is the partial structure which uh, was in focus of this type of chemistry. So, thanks for listening. Uh, next week uh, we will change to organotitanium chemistry. Well, I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.